Hello everyone, and welcome to Izumi's Cozy Cast, the coziest Minecraft roleplay, or just general roleplay, because we're also going to be talking about ASMR roleplays a bit in this podcast as well. The coziest of that variety roleplay on the internet. Now, I am Izumi, your host. This is the first episode of Cozy Cast, so I am still getting used to the podcast setup, so if you have any critiques let me know down in the comments below, I'd love to hear it. So whether you're here from my main channel that this will be uploaded to, Izumi, or you're from Izumi ASMR, or you're brand new, thank you so much for being here today. Today we're talking about Minecraft roleplays specifically, um, and kind of expanding the Minecraft roleplaying community, and I'll, I'll get further into that later on. But first, I really quickly wanted to thank our sponsor for this episode. That's right, we got a sponsor, kind of, uh, Lunar Fay Brand. It is my small business that I <laughs> I make just like cute t-shirts and stuff. And um, if you want to go support it, go ahead. Um, I have hoodies, I have uh, phone cases, I have notebooks, I have many, many items. Uh, a lot of sweatshirts, a lot of hoodies, because staying cozy. Um, so go check it out and let me know what you guys think. Use code BLOSSOM, that's B-L-O-S-S-O-M, for free shipping in the U.S. So yeah, go check that out. Link will be down in the description. Now, <laughs> that felt so weird to do. I've never done a sponsorship ever. Um, besides, like, I uh, did, like, a sponsorship for, like, a Minecraft server once a long time ago. Um, but, like, that was, like, not professional, you know? That was just, like, an owner of a Minecraft server reached out to me and uh, asked me to play on their server in exchange for, you know, some, like, perks on their server and stuff like that. So, like, it's not a full-blown like I don't know it's not like a full-blown sponsorship like I've never had a full-blown sponsorship and like it won't be a regular thing for these to get sponsored um just because I like to keep it pretty on topic but if anyone happens to be listening who wants to sponsor me my business email is on my about section of my youtube channel um go ahead and send me an email with your sponsorship mumbo jumbo and I will get back to you as soon as I see it um, regardless, let's actually get into the topic today. Minecraft roleplays. Let's talk about that. Um, Minecraft roleplays have a very long history online. They started with just, like, basic NPC work. Uh, like, if you think Minecraft Diaries Season 1 type stuff, um, and, like, Sky Does Minecraft back in that day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys know who I'm talking about. Um, him, like, role-playing with his friends and stuff like that, his co-workers and stuff. Um, there have, there's been a lot of different types of role-plays over the years, and I think that has made it where Minecraft role-play is a very loose term nowadays, and there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. And, like, I know a lot of people tried to shift um, cinematic role plays to being called strictly machinimas. And I think that that should just be, you know, if you want to call it a machinima, call it a machinima. If you want to go on a micro role play, call it a micro role play. I think regardless, if you are role playing, playing a role in Minecraft, you are role playing. You're doing a Minecraft role play, uh, at the end of the day, uh, according to the definition, right? And so I kind of want to just talk about how you can get into the Minecraft roleplay community, basically. Like, um, the community's been very small for a while now. Um, it kind of died out a lot when big, big Minecraft role players stepped away from the scene or stopped doing what they used to do, um, such as Afmau, uh, now doing more traditional, like, Minecraft with roleplaying in it, for sure, but, like, it's more so aimed towards a young demographic and kind of, um, very, like, jumpy titles, eye-catching thumbnails, rather than telling a cohesive long story over multiple episodes, rather than how it used to be, like, her bio on Twitter used to be, um, 
or it's it might still be. I'm not positive. Uh, but last time I checked, it was, um, I believe, like, I make anime in Minecraft. And, like, I feel like that's a very good way of, like, how, describing during that era what a lot of people did. Um, they did a lot of very, like, anime-inspired Minecraft role plays for a while. Um, not only, like, the yandere, like... <laughs> genre not only just like actual like japanese influenced media being put into minecraft but like the drama the acting the voice acting was very anime-esque for a while very like i'm gonna back away from the mic because it's gonna be loud oh my god did you see what just happened like you know like that kind of that kind of very over the top um and there's nothing wrong with that i think that that was just a really surreal really fun time of minecraft role plays and it's what a lot of people aimed for um and i think that was a lot of fun i miss those days and as someone who stepped away for about a year and a half two years and then came back just uh two t technically i came back two years ago but i only recently have like been doing it from my heart rather than just spitting out what I think the algorithm would like, you know? Like, I've actually been pacing myself and applying my talents the correct way recently, um, specifically with Charm Deck and Netmax, my most recent series. And I think that, honestly, I, I feel like because it's been a while since we've had, like, a big role player like Afma, like there were a bunch of them, obviously. There there were many people that did big Minecraft role plays. Like It's Funny did a lot of, like, she did like one of the most well-known Yandere High School role plays. Um, and I think that that was like a really, like, I think one of the reasons why I did so well is because there was like audiences like myself that were like 12, 13 around there, uh, even younger, because I, I started watching them when I was even younger. But like this specific era was when I was like, 12, 13, we were just getting introduced to anime, I feel like. A lot of us were, at least. And having Minecraft role plays show off how, like, cool, like, anime style shows can be and how, like, over the top they can be and how beautiful Japanese culture is, like, when they actually really do, like, hardcore play into it. Um, I think it's really cool. Um, I think that it's really fascinating. And, like, nowadays, like, I'm a total otaku. Like, I freaking, I love everything Japanese. And I think that, like, visiting Japan is, like, it's on it's on the top of my bucket list. Like, it's one of the biggest things I want to do in my life um, when it comes to, like, a, like, checklist of things I want to do. You know, that kind of, that kind of deal. Um, and I think that's, that's a really cool thing that, like, they, they were kind of, they started getting popular, like, these types of role plays started getting popular right around the same time anime started getting a little bit more mainstream. Because, like, obviously, anime's been popular for a very long time outside of the U.S., as well as, like, in the U.S., like, Dragon Ball was huge for so long Naruto. But, like, I think being mainstream, it started to creep into being mainstream around that time. And I, by the way, for reference, I'm 19 years old now. Um, so it was about six years ago. Um, wow. <laughs> six, yeah, six or seven years ago. Um, and wow, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, wow, I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> no, no, 19 is so young. 19 is so young. Like I got, I got years and years and years and years ahead of me. Um, I'm just, I'm only like one year old in adult, you know, like if you think about it that way, I'm, pr I'm very young, but, uh, it's just weird thinking back and thinking, oh, 13, 12 was six or seven years ago. Like that's, that's, that's the weird part. Um, but I think a lot of you can kind of understand where I'm coming from with that. Like, I think that's why it did so well, I don't think that's the only reason it did well. There were many amazing storytellers who did Minecraft role plays. There are many just fun personalities that did Minecraft role plays. And I think that obviously came into a very, very big part of why they did so well. I just thought it was an interesting observation of the time period um, and how many 
people that grew up with Athmau are now massive anime fans. Like, I think that that's just a really cool connection. And I think that Athmau's old role plays really did show a new generation that it's okay to like anime and stuff like that and be a little nerdy, you know? Um, I know she definitely helped me from feeling self-conscious about my nerdiness from a very young age because she would tell embarrassing stories of herself from middle school and stuff like that, wearing cat ears in class. And that, I think, just made me feel like, oh, okay, yeah, it's okay to be a little bit embarrassing sometimes and stuff like that. Now, I never wore cat ears in class. Nothing there's anything wrong with that, of course, but um, I was a very closeted, a closeted individual <laughs> in general. I was in the closet as well as I was very closeted about my interests in public places, especially like school. I was homeschooled, but I did like out of home classes with a bunch of kids. Um, if you know, you know, um, but anytime I was in that kind of space, I really hid away my true side. Besides one friend I had, Peter, if you're listening, Love you, bud. You were such a sweetheart to me in class. You were like my only friend <laughs> in class. Love you. I don't think he's ever going to listen to this, but hey, if he is, hi, you're great. Um, but yeah, he was like my only friend in that class because he was also nerdy, but in the same way I was nerdy because a lot of, there were like a lot of nerdy kids, but like not a lot of them were like super into harry potter and video games and stuff like that and like obviously i don't i don't know how in-depth peter was into like video games and stuff like that but it's just i felt very like invited to talk about that kind of stuff like i i felt like i could talk about it if i wanted to um but yeah like i think that people like how afma used to be obviously like Kawaii chan is a very like over the top stereotypical like <laughs> anime girl she's not even a japanese girl she's an anime girl like she's not she's not accurate to how japanese people act she's accurate to how over the top annoying anime characters act um and i think that that's not the greatest representation but i do think that um any representation at that time period helped it be brought to light, if that makes sense. Um, obviously, let me let me know your guys' opinions down in the comments. Also, I want to make this very clear. With this podcast, and as I am getting used to podcasting and stuff like that, um, I wanted to make sure you guys know, I want your guys' feedback. Um, constructive criticism, obviously. Um, don't just be saying, I hate when you do this, I hate when you do that. Just be like, hey, I think you would benefit from doing this. Like, that kind of stuff. Um, I love those types of comments. I, f I thrive off of those types of comments because it makes me feel like you guys see that I have potential to be better and I want to work towards that, you know? Um, I want to be the best I can be at this thing, you know? Anything that I do, really, I want to strive to be better at. So constructive criticism is so welcome. Also, your guys' opinions. If you guys have differing opinions, just keep it civil, obviously. Let me know down in the comments below. Um, as well as like your takes on things, even if it's like the same as mine or if it's just a little different or it's totally different, let me know. Um, but yeah, um, another thing is like, there were a lot of groups. Um, this is a big point. There were a lot of groups of creators, kind of like how the Dream SMP is today. Um, and I think it's one of the reasons why the Dream SMP did so well. And I, I am so thankful for the Dream SMP <laughs> reviving Minecraft. Not only that, but like PewDiePie gave it that little kick with playing Minecraft. And then Dream took that and like fucking ran with it. <laughs> and I'm so happy that he did. Um, the Dream SMP really did reawaken Minecraft. It, it really did. And... I'm so happy that it did. And I'm so happy that I stuck around liking Minecraft during the whole time. Like I took a break from YouTube in that, um, as I mentioned earlier, but I never stopped liking Minecraft. <laughs> I was just like more, I just played it by free time rather than playing it on camera. But there were a lot of friend groups like the Dream SMP. Um, back in the day, um, obviously now we know not a lot of them were the greatest people, 
um, in those old Minecraft friend groups. Um, and I'm not going to name names because I don't want to make anyone feel like they are uh, wrong for being a fan of any of them or anything like that. Um, if you understand what I'm talking about, you know. If not, we can have a t conversation down in the comments if you'd like. But there are definitely people that aren't the greatest in those old friend groups, but that's not that's not the point that I'm arising here. I think the fact there were friend groups really brought a sense of community, really brought a sense of you were hanging out with a bunch of friends. And I think there are also creators that did phenomenal without a group of friends. Like Dan TDM's still thriving. He just had another kid, I believe, a little boy. Um, he has two sons now, I believe. Um, Asher and Miles. I don't know if I, did. I don't know if it's Miles. I don't know if I got the name right. Um, I saw him post that he was taking a week off, but or a, a couple weeks off. But um, Dan TDM did amazing all by himself. Like he did a lot of solo stuff, and but the thing is, he made his own friend group, if that makes sense, through his role play, because um, he had like Doctor Treoris and like um, oh god, what was what was the dog's name? There was the dog that was a skeleton dog, and I don't remember his name. It's been so long since I've watched him. I'll occasionally watch his, like, um, the modded world that is like, 200 mods on it right now. I'll occasionally watch those videos in the background while I'm working, but I haven't, like, I haven't watched, like, Dr. Treoris in a very long time. <laughs> like, that was a long time ago, but, um... And that was like a different, that was a completely different type of role play than like anyone else was doing because it was basically just modded adventures with role playing in them. Um, and I think that's why I really stand by like the anything, if you're playing a role in Minecraft, you are role playing, you know, you're doing a Minecraft role play because I loved so many different types growing up. And so I think that's why I stand by that so, so intensely. Um... And there definitely are friend groups nowadays in the Minecraft roleplay community, and I think that's amazing. And I, I I like looking at all of them and kind of, it makes my heart warm, you know. Like, I have, like, a friend group of, you know, my, my Fallen Stars girlies, love them. Um, they're all amazing. But I feel like there's not a super-duper popular group of friends anymore. Um, none that have, like, over obviously correct me if I'm wrong, I might just not be seeing them. Um, none that have more than like 500,000 subscribers, like multiple of them have over like 500,000 subscribers and all their friends. And I know that like, that is something besides the dream SMP, obviously, but that is something that like the Minecraft roleplay, like traditional esque Minecraft roleplay community, like not SMP roleplay, um, is missing. And I hope to bring that to light. Like, I miss a lot of my old role-playing friends I used to have um, that didn't necessarily do a lot of role plays, but they were just really close to me and they helped me with mine and I helped them with any projects they started. Um, not to name drop or anything, uh, but I haven't talked to these people in a while. I talked to one of these people recently um, and it was like really nice reconnecting a little bit. I need to actually schedule a call-in with her because um, I miss her. But, um, Brie, um, if you're listening to this, we should hang out. Um, she actually technically is a behind the scenes, like, helper of Fallen Stars. Um, so I still technically work with her, but she's not super active. So I sadly don't get to hang out with her a lot, but I hope that I can hang out with her more in the future. Um, Leah, if you're listen to listening to this. I know that's not your real name, but that was your online name, and I don't know if you want your online name, I mean, your real name set online, so, um, but Leah, if you ever find this, I doubt you will, I miss you. <laughs> it, me, Brie, and Leah used to play Hypixel for hours and hours every night, and, like, I miss that, and, um, obviously, the amazing Nexi was one of my very old friends, like, I've known her since we both were, like, 11 or 12 so like we've known each other for a very long time um but she was another part of that friend group and there were people that like came and went in that friend group as well a lot of voice actors that were also in that friend group um and we weren't by by any means like big 
Um, but during my, you know, my my prime, I guess I would say, of the OG Zoomy days, I did get like I had like thirty thousand subscribers, and I'd get m m like a bad video got a thousand views. If that gives you a viewpoint of how my channel used to do. Nowadays, a good video gets <laughs> a thousand views because I took such a long break. Um, but I'm moving up, and that's that's the point. That's like that's that's the good part, you know. But back in the day, a thousand views was a was a bad video because every video got like 10k and up you know like I was doing well basically is what I'm saying um 14 year old me knew how to <laughs> knew her shit um but um I want to make her proud and that's why we're so close to 30k that's my next subscriber goal I want to hit 30k again because if you don't know what happened basically I had to leave for mental health um but now I'm back as you can see um and I and like the happiest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> um, and I have like so much motivation, so much passion. I haven't had this much motivation and passion since I started Izumi when I was 11 years old. And I don't think I, I didn't think I'd ever get that passion back. Um, especially for Minecraft role plays. I didn't think I'd ever get that passion back. And so it's really, ha I'm really, really happy that I have that back. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, we weren't big by any means and like Brie and Leah were I don't think they ever fully came out with a role play but uh Nixie had an old channel back then I'm not going to say the name because I don't know if she is okay with me saying the name I don't know if she wants people to go find it um but she did fairly well on it um and yeah we did a lot of videos together and it was just a lot of fun and we would hang out for hours and hours and hours and we record a bunch of content. I miss a lot of my friends from that era. Um, and I'm so happy to be making a lot of new friends because I think one thing that when I left the platform for a couple years, I think that was the biggest thing I missed was all the people. Um, and the biggest thing I missed was you guys, was my subscribers my cherry blossoms, as I've called you guys from like almost day one. Um, I, I love you guys so much. And I think that's just a very special part of my communities. It's always been so sweet. It's always been so patient and so kind and so loving and everyone is just a friend. <laughs> and I think that that's awesome. Um, but like, I wouldn't say that we were the content creator friend group by any means back in the day i think that definitely was still like the big big content creators for sure but i do think that having a bunch of friend groups back then like is kind of how it was there were like a bunch of minecraft role player friend groups rather than i think there's like three that i can think of off the top of my head that are like Minecraft roleplay friend groups, not necessarily SMP roleplay friend groups, even though, as I said, those do count as Minecraft roleplays in my head, um, but it's like a different vibe because I feel like when you're in an SMP with people, um, you kind of have to be a friend group, if that makes sense. Like, even if you are friends with them outside of it, like, that's amazing. Like, I'm friends outside of the SMP with a lot of the members of Fallen Stars, but it is, I feel like it's different. It's different from, like, an outside perspective. And I think, I just think that, like, if you have been thinking of making a Minecraft roleplay or helping out in the community or anything like that, this is your sign to start. Don't push it off any longer. Don't wait for certain equipment. Don't wait for this. Don't wait for that. Don't wait for more time. If you have a passion for it and you want to do it, do it. <laughs> like, I'm so tired of seeing people not follow their dreams because they're scared. And in my opinion, the biggest failure and loss is not trying at all. in a year it's okay it's right now when i'm recording this it is december 24th 2022 it is new it is uh christmas eve <laughs> i almost said new year's eve it is christmas eve right now and 
oh, excuse me. I got like a little like scratch in my throat. <clears throat> and I think we all need to take a second and think of who do we want to be at the end of next year? What do we want to look back at and be proud of? And I'm not one for grand New Year's resolutions by any means, um, because I think that in the middle of winter, because like I am a little bit of like a naturey girl, you know, um, the middle of winter is not the time to be starting a bunch of new things because it is a resting time for like every other species. Like, why shouldn't we give ourselves that? Um, to put it very simply, <laughs> um, spring now spring is the time to fucking get on some shit treat the rest of winter as prepping season i actually was having a conversation with nakesy earlier today about this because like we were like so on the same page all the time basically um but treat winter as prepping season getting ready for the journey that you're going to embark on in spring and summer and fall, obviously, like the whole rest of the year. Because why would you be performing when you're still in the dressing room? That's an analogy I really like in this kind of situation is like winter is the dressing room. It's you getting ready. It's you resting. It's you relaxing. It's you, whether you spend time with family or you spend time by yourself, celebrating if you celebrate any holidays, all that jazz. Spring is the performance. Spring is the stage. And that's when everything can blossom into what it's meant to be. Now, if you don't believe in any of that, I don't blame you. <laughs> like, if you just think that's a bunch of witchy mumbo jumbo, I respect you still. Um, it's just something that I believe in. And so if you want to believe in it, and if there's any people that feel f afraid to believe in that, but it brings you comfort hearing someone talk about it, there. <laughs> you just heard me talk about it. Let's move on though for those who don't want to listen to that anymore. If you guys want me to talk about that more in depth, I can do a full episode on that. Just let me know down in the comments. Um, but back to Minecraft roleplays. If you have been wanting to do a Minecraft roleplay, start getting ready to do one. I believe in you. You can do it and we need more people in this community. It is shrinking day by day because there's not, there's no big Minecraft role player. Like there's no millions of subscribers Minecraft role player that's still doing Minecraft role plays. Um, at least that I can find. I can't find anyone that is still doing Minecraft role plays that has multiple millions of subscribers or at least a million subscriber. Um, because as long as one succeeds, we all succeed. Because as a community, and, like, I'm not big for, like, having to be a part of the community. Like, by no means do I feel like you have to be a part of the, like, community. But, like, I, when I say community, I just mean, like, people who do Minecraft roleplays, you know? Um, because I am by no means part of, like, a community of Minecraft roleplayers. I just am a Minecraft roleplayer who has friends who also Minecraft roleplay, you know? Um, but I think when one of us succeeds, when one of us gets a huge break... When one of us gets that one episode that gets 5 million views, you know, we all benefit from it. And I feel like I'm tired of people gatekeeping this knowledge of how to get into this field. Um, I did a video recently on how to do a Minecraft roleplay like Afmo. Um, I'll link it down below. Um, let me actually write that down because I don't know if I'll remember. Let me bring out my notes, my notes app, um, and write that down here. Let's see. Links in app one, obviously Lunar Fay brand and Afmau RP vid. Okay. There we go. What? That is not Afmau. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Sorry about that guys. Um, when one of us succeeds, we all do. And so I'm tired of like so many people gatekeeping how to do certain things in this in this sphere. Um, I think everyone should have the ability 
to learn how to Minecraft roleplay because I think it's just a really fun, creative outlet. Whether you pursue it as a like business or not, like I don't pursue this as a business, I pursue this as my passion. Um, now I pursue my like commission work <laughs> as a business and I pursue like easy me ASMR a little bit like a business just in the like office hours type thing. Like I have like a work schedule, you know? Um, but Izumi's always been passion. And like when I started to treat it like a business, that's when I got burnt out. That's when I got, that's when I had to take a break because of my mental health. My mental health. Um, but yeah, if, if you used to be in the community or made Minecraft role plays in general and you haven't in a long time, this is your sign to do it again. There's no better time like the present because in three months, when it's spring and you're ready to go on that stage, what do you want to bring? What do you want to have prepared? What do you want to perform? If that makes sense. <laughs> oh gosh. But yeah, do it. <laughs> Just do it, dude. I believe in you. And if you have any questions, like, at all like how to do it when you have a shitty laptop because i had one for a very long time that like literally i had my, my render distance on the lowest setting because and like only like two mods i had to like make sure i didn't download certain mods because they were just too powerful for my old laptop like that's what i started on that and a headset mic that i stole from my dad <laughs> like i started on really shitty equipment um and then over time, I got myself a snowball mic, uh, which is only like 20 bucks, I'm pretty sure, something like that. Um, but it's better than a headset mic. <laughs> um, and then I got myself a Yeti mic. And then I got a PC. Like I, I, I saved up my money and I asked for Christmases of just like, can you get me this thing to upgrade my stuff? You know, and that's how into it I was. Um, and if you don't have that passion for it, but you still like Minecraft role plays, that's completely fine too. You can help out others with their Minecraft role plays, or you can just casually, over time, prepare for stuff. It doesn't have to be this spring, you know? Um, but I feel like we need more role players in this community. We need more people that are willing to make unique series that contribute to the growth of the entire niche group, if that makes sense. And I'm going to work really hard to hopefully be that person one day. I believe in myself and like I've struggled to believe in myself for a very long time and I felt like it was very cocky to believe in myself and now I'm finally to the point where I'm like, no, it's not cocky to believe in yourself. You're not saying that you're better than anyone. You're saying that you are better than you used to be. That is all believing in yourself is, is. Like you are moving forward and you can do the thing you are setting yourself out to do. And what I'm setting myself out to do is to first hit 30K and then my next goal after that is 50K. Um, that's a lot of fucking people. Um, and from there, 100K or whatever it may be. My goal is to bring passion to those who haven't had it in a while, or motivation rather, and to show that Minecraft role plays are just fun, and you don't have to have them be super professional, or you can take your time and make them freaking stellar cinematic works of art. Like, I do very different types of Minecraft role plays depending on my mood. Like, I have Minecraft Myths, which is like a very, like, it's like the original kind of Minecraft roleplay style, like first person, medieval, fantasy, like very jokey, breaks the breaks the fourth wall all the time. And then I also have termed academics, which is like a movie, but it's just filmed in Minecraft. So like, I feel like there's a lot of range for what you can do in this game. It's a sandbox game. Like it's meant to be molded and crafted into what you need it to be and if you have any questions for what mods are needed 
what shaders are needed. If you have very basic questions of how to download mods, how to download this, how to download that, there are so many tutorials online um, that you can very easily find. Just type in your YouTube search bar, how to download mods. That is what I did. And it will, it'll show you how to do it. Um, but if you have questions about like what mods to use, what shaders packs to use, um, anything, what to do if this is your situation, what to do if that is your situation. I really want the comment section of this podcast episode to be very conversational, very helpful. And if you guys have any advice, put it down in the comments below, whether you do Minecraft role plays or not, whether you're just a consumer of Minecraft role plays, whether you've never seen a Minecraft role play a day in your life, you know, um, give your advice down below as long as it's obviously like, <laughs> not like, no, 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 give me your advice down below. I was like, I was going to make a joke about like, not like mean, but like who would give advice that's just like plain out mean. That's not advice at that point. So I'm not going to say that. Um, but yeah, we need more people in this community. I think there's a lot of amazing people in this community right now. Um, very talented people. Um, but I feel like you can, it can never hurt to invite more people in, you know? It can never hurt to get the word out there more. It can never hurt to show people that it's not that hard, you know? Like, I know that there's a lot of struggles that can come with making Minecraft role plays, but I feel like that all depends on how you make them. And I think a very, very important part of making a Minecraft role play is finding the way you want to make it. You don't have to do what I do. You don't have to do what Afma did. You don't have to do what anyone in this community does. Find a way you like to do it and do it that way. If you like to just use custom NPCs and you don't like having body actors, just use NPCs and don't have body actors. If you want to have a camera mod so you are the only body actor, use a camera mod and be the only body actor. If you want to use Blockbuster and make it this really fucking cool, like <laughs> really fucking cool, like everyone can move body acted deal, use Blockbuster. If you want to have a bunch of voice, uh, voice actors be your body actors, do that. Like as long as you disclose to the people that you're working with, if any, what your creative process is. And don't let anyone tell you that your creative process is wrong. If it works for you, it's correct for you. Um, and yeah, just follow what you feel like is right for you. And I, I got a lot of shame I put on myself, really. No one said I can't do it a certain way, really. Um, years and years ago, when I did Minecraft role plays, like kind of right before, around the time before I quit, um, I had a lot of inner shame towards how I recorded because I didn't have body actors. I tried out body actors, didn't work with me. I couldn't get the work done. I felt like I was either wasting their time or like I wasn't getting the scene exactly the way I wanted it. I'm a perfectionist. And so it's very hard for me to work with a bunch of people. I'm also very much an introvert. So the idea of working with a bunch of people, like every, every like multiple days a week, Made, made me very stressed because I'm just, I'm, I need alone time. And I think one of the biggest things I love about content creation is the fact that I can do it basically on my own. The only help I have personally is I have a co-writer occasionally where they'll come in and they'll help me write the scenes that are really hard for me to get through. Or if I'm like stuck on a scene, they'll come in and help me, or they'll help me highlight the names and stuff like that. Or my voice actors, <laughs> they're really, that's really my only people that help me, um, and my lovely artist, obviously, um, if I have an artist in that series, it's not required by any means, but I do have a artist for the thumbnails and, uh, the visual novel aspects in Charmed Academics, the Cyan Alpha Wolf, amazing artwork, go follow her on Instagram, but, like, I guess I had a lot of shame in that, right? And I guess it was because I saw how everyone else did it. I saw everyone else had body actors. Everyone else had... Blockbuster was very new at that time, at least from my knowledge. Um, and everyone 
just had started using it. Um, and I didn't like new things, really. I don't, I, I, I'm neurodivergent. <laughs> I struggle with new things. Most people do, even if they're not neuro neurodivergent. But like, I very much struggle with expanding out of my comfort zone. This is the cozy cast. This is my comfort zone. <laughs> this is the comfort zone for people. But um, <laughs> jokes aside, um, I really liked doing it the way I used to do it. It was a lot of fun. And I think I'll still do Minecraft role plays occasionally that way. Um, and I think there's a way to make the story from your heart regardless of how you do it. Um, as long as at the end you're able to share that story with others, that's that's what matters. But anyways, we'll go ahead and wrap up here. If you guys would like a part two of this podcast, these podcast episodes are going to be about 45 minutes to an hour. And so I'm kind of wrapping it up here and we're going to say our final remarks. Don't leave just yet because there, there's a possibility I'll go on to another tangent. <laughs> um, but let's kind of go over like, what did we talk about? Okay. We talked about uh, OG Minecraft role players. We talked about the, the original friend groups and how there's not a lot of friend groups anymore, like big, big friend groups in the Minecraft role-playing community. Um, we talked about how there's the Minecraft community, the Minecraft role-play community is thinning over time. Like there's not a, as many creators as there used to be. It used to be so many, like it was so saturated. <laughs> um, and now it's, you know, there's way less Minecraft role players. Um, we talked about starting Minecraft role plays um, and believing in yourself enough to do it and getting the courage to s take that first step. Um, and remember that nothing has to be scary and nothing has to be hard. It's up to you and how you go about creating something uh, on how hard it is. And if you're not a big fan of editing, do a first person role play because that doesn't require a ton of editing. If you love editing, do a cinematic role play. Do like a really heavily cinematic, maybe with some cool visual effects in there role play. Like, uh, like um, oh God, what was it called? The Magicians? Was that what it's called? No, it wasn't called The Magicians. Magic, magic, magel, magelicans? <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. It's by like Cute Jakey or something like that. Like that had like really cool cinematics and it had like special effects in it and stuff like that. Um, the magelicans? I don't remember what it's called. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to look it up after this and feel like such a dummy. Um, like figure out the way <laughs> you can tell your story if you want to. Obviously, don't feel like you have to. This is for people that, this this message is for people that are holding themselves back from going for it and want to. But I digress. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this episode of The Cozy Cast, or Izumi's Cozy Cast. Now, <laughs> as I said, I really do want your guys' feedback on this podcast and whatever I'm talking about in the podcast. So please, comment down below. Let me know. I want this to feel like we're having a discussion, not just me talking at you. Um, so yeah, let me know your opinions. Let me know um, your constructive criticisms and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining. See you next time, loves. Bye.